Hello, welcome once again. Um, I was asked about boosters and jump starters, which are the better ones. Well, obviously in front of me you see the, the Noko one, which is pretty popular right now because it is small and uh, it is pretty light to carry as opposed to the big ones that were years ago. Um, so anyway, first we're going to discuss the features that it has and then we're going to talk about the peak amps and what they relate to. Now, obviously... When you look at this, it says 2,000 amps at 12 volts. They all have to be obviously 12 volts. Now, as you charge it, you're going to see the green light, and that tells you it's fully charged. Now, these lights over here are actually, these are two red ones and, two, and one orange one, but they don't look like that in the video, but they are. About 75% is here and 100% is here. You like to always charge it when it's green at 100%. Now, the input, the output, you can charge it from an AC adapter, and you go into a, a USB port. That's the output. This is the input, which is a mini port, uh, a mini USB. Some have micro USBs, mini, mini USBs. It really doesn't matter, but you're charging it from 120 volts AC to this one that comes with, the, comes with this. And as you can see, in 12 volts USB. That's the input. You're charging it. The output, if you want to take the output of it, is also USB, but the regular USB, at 12 volts. So the, the AC voltage is converted to or down, downgraded to 12 volts, and you can get out 12 volts. Now, that's the features that it has. So you can measure also the output over here at 12 volts, which I'll probably try to do later on in the video to show you. Now, let's take the things that it has, some features that it has. Now, these cables, as you see, these are pretty short cables. When you're doing, when you're charging or you want to uh, boost a side, side terminal battery, it could be a little, a little difficult to try to fit these in because they are kind of short for the top post term, top terminal they work pretty well but again for the side terminals sometimes they're short and you have to turn this around in order to ma maneuver it and make sure you make good contact Th the contacts over here as you can these are serrated these are have the teeth in them there are some um not boosters but there are some as i showed you before in the video Testers, battery testers, they do not have these teeth on them, and therefore it makes it hard to slip on the side terminals. So remember, the GM vehicles, the Chevys, they like to have the, the, the side terminals. So always make sure to have proper, proper contact to those side terminals. Okay, now let's see one more feature that I'd like to show you. Okay, returning to the video, as you can see, there is a light over here, and this is the light. Okay, now obviously it's too light. Okay, now this is the flash mode. This blinks. This is a feature that I've seen on this. This is very, very helpful. And it's you see how strong the light is. Let's say you're on the, on the side of the road, the shoulder or the highway. You want to use this, or I use this, let's say. Let's say you have a flat tire, whatever you have, or you have problems with the car, obviously. I use this to, as a warning for other vehicles to see me on the highway, especially at night when it's dark, or if I'm on a side, a service road or on a side street and it's dark, you want to let the other vehicles know that I am parked here and I am, and I am in this spot over here, which is hard to see me, but this will get their attention. When you have a light that blinks, it catches a person's attention, just like a traffic light. If you have a steady light, it will not catch that person's attention. So I like this feature for emergency road assistance or whatever. So vehicles know that you are there and they can see you because let's say your lights don't work, your hazard lights don't work, you're completely dead. This comes in as a great feature. That's, that's my opinion, but I think it's really something to have. Okay, now let's go to the other things that we were talking about. Okay, question was asked about jumper cables. I was the first one on YouTube to mention, since we have computer modules associated in today's vehicle vehicles, especially fuel-injecting cars, we have so many modules. 
If you use jumper cables, whenever you notice when you put it from the donor car, the car that you're going to charge to your car, the dead car, when you put the positive, there's a, a spike. That spike is not healthy, and it's not healthy for the computer modules because that spike, that voltage spike, is more than 12 volts and more than the computer modules can handle. Therefore, there is no on and off switch when you put jumper cables from the other car to, to the dead car. There is no... So once you place this this to the dead car you see that spike you might not notice it right away and you say well at least i started the car but it might do damage later on to other modules remember there's air conditioning modules there's modules so many of them so even though you start it up and you say great it, it the jumper cables help in the long run it might do damage so like i said it was the first one stay away from this this when you turn this off right now obviously right and i connect these two to the dead battery terminal okay and when i connect these two then i turn it on it it has a suppressor circuit in it that means when i connect it you will not see a voltage a spike that spike that i just talked about before it suppresses it so therefore it is more safer to use this for especially computerized cars that we have today because you won't see that voltage spike. It is suppressed by a suppressor inside. That's why I always say use these. Do not use jumper cables. Okay? Now, another feature, some jump starters have the air compressor for the air inflator for your, for your, for your tires. Obviously, this does not have. This is much lighter weight, and the other ones obviously have the air compressor for reasons that you want to inflate your tires. Obviously, they are higher in cost. But this is just strictly a jump starter, and that's all it is. So, we went over those features and all these things. Now, I wanted to show you something. How do I know it's charged? I look at the lights, and the lights tell me it's charged, correct? Well, okay, we're going to do something. This is the meter, okay? This is the meter on DC volts. Now, this tells me it's fully charged, correct? That means I'm ready to use it if I want to give a boost, okay? Now, there is the output over here. This is the output. The output tells me it's 12 volts. Since it's charged, I should get 12 volts over here, okay? If you're going to measure it, right, and I don't advise to measure it, the output terminal is over here. This output terminal, as you see, this outer ring over here is the ground, the negative. The middle one is the positive, which will give you the output. So I'm going to put this over here, and you're going to look over here, and you're going to see how much it measures. Eleven point five. What I did was I put this. I put this to the middle one, and you saw I measured 11.5. We can charge a little more even to try to get 12 volts. Now, we know the output is working over here, but we're going to do so, and this is the point I want to stress. And let me pause because I have to set things up. Okay, let's go back to the point that I wanted to make. And for this, I have to demonstrate it. We're fully charged, okay? We're ready to use this booster, correct? By the LED indicators, it's telling us we're ready to charge. Now, here's the other one. The terminal we measured, 11.5 volts, it's telling us the output is available. We're ready to charge. Now, look at this, and this is why I do this demonstration. This is my meter. It doesn't matter if I use red or green or purple for the positive. It just happens that this has the the alligator clip that I can use to attach it. So here's a one here, the negative, and here's the positive. These are the leads, obviously, of the output that go to the meter. Look what the meter is telling us. The meter is telling us we have half a volt. How is that possible? This is telling us it's fully charged. This is telling me I have an output because I just showed you the measurement of the output, correct? But yet when I go to the leads, which will go to the battery of the dead car, it's telling me I have no voltage, half a volt. We'll consider that zero. How is that possible? Okay, here's the feature of these uh, boosters. 
Right now, I'm not connected to the battery terminal. Since I'm not connected to the battery terminal, there is no output from this. As you can see, 0 or 0.5 volts. There's no output. When is the output going to take effect, you think? When I take these leads and I measure and I connect it to the actual battery of the car, okay? You, put, you connect this and this one to the battery terminals of the car that I'm going to boost, it will detect that. When it will detect that through a sensor, then it knows now I'm going to give an output. So when you connect it, then it will give an output. Then if, if I would have a meter, then I would have 12 volts at the output leads. Right now, I'm not connected to the battery terminals. It senses it and says, I'm going to shut you down. Even though, even though the LEDs show it's ready, even though the output terminal measured close to 12 volts, no, it's not going to give you the 12 volts at the leads. And that's the most important we need at the leads. That's a feature of these type of boosters at least for this one the best booster is the old type booster which have batteries in it the batteries in it are much better these are probably microprocessor and things like that power supplies and all that but the ones that actually have a battery are the best ones but well, remember these let's say you're at 11 volts 11 11 and a half volts 10 and a half volts these will these will help uh, boost or uh, restart the car but if you're let's say a dead battery nine volts or something like that don't rely on this to help a dead battery so it has its limitations also okay now i asked a question before about peak amps over here as you can see 2000 amps okay let me set that up hold on okay now what's this 2000 amps and how do i know how much I need as peak amps. It's referred to peak amps. How do I know what? Do I, how do I know how many crank uh, peak amps I need to buy with the booster? So, so you have this one over here. This one over here is at one. Okay, sorry for the distractions, but we have peak amps. We have something called cranking amps. Cranking amps is the, is defined as the amps of your battery that could go to 9.6 volts for 30 seconds, okay, when you crank, obviously. There is something called peak amps. Peak amps are that very short burst that 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 this burst uh, uh, booster can give you, okay? So we don't know how much it is. Let's say you have a four-cylinder, a, a V6, a V8. Obviously, you're going to need more as you have more cylinders, obviously, right? So... That peak amps might be 600, 700 amps. We don't know. There is a way to measure it with the, with the clamp meter, but we're not. that's not what the video is about. That peak amps is a very short burst. It can happen one second. It happen less than a second. How long does it take you to crank to start over your car? Maybe one to two seconds. It happens that quickly, correct? Okay? If you have to hold it on for more than four seconds or three seconds, there's a problem, right? So one to two seconds four cylinder maybe a v a v6 v8 takes a little longer but we're talking about seconds over here anyway so that peak amp that 2000 amps that i described over there that's the instantaneous or the peak amp the rush current we call it in rush current as you shock the battery or shock the booster when we turn on the engine it starts the the quick and peak amp as it settles as it settles, it can go down to, let's say, 500, 400, 300 amps, whatever it is, whatever engine it is, and then it'll settle on that, and that's called the cranking amps. So what we're looking for is this one to make sure we can have the highest possible amps from the, from the booster, okay? So as I turn the key, peak amps are appearing. As I hold the longer to crank it to keep to keep it starting cranking amps are now involved okay now like we just said this is 2000 amps let's say there's a thousand amp booster is that enough what i always say is always look at your battery if you have a battery the cranking amps which is at 32 degrees is at zero uh, zero degrees this one is higher than this one i always say go higher than the highest rating of amps that you have in your in your battery in your in your car and not only that go a little above that one 
just for security purposes, just for tolerance purposes. So let's say I need 800 crank, uh, cranking amps. I'll go a little above that and say, I'll get one, which is 1,000 amps. Okay, I'm not going to get one which is 600 uh, amps or 650 amps just because they have that. It's going to cost you more in the long run. Of course, it's going to cost you more. I use, as you can see, 2,000 amps. You could use it quite a few times. It can even start trucks. But for your purposes, if it's 800 cranking amps and 600 cold cranking amps at your battery, then, therefore, try to use a 1,000 uh, uh, peak amp uh, booster. So... Always pay attention to these things. When I wanted, when I was explaining which battery, when you replace a battery, I always say go by the cold cranking amps. The the higher cold cranking amp, if it's six hundred, go eight hundred cold cranking amps, a thousand cold cranking amps, because this is the worst possible situation at zero degrees in winter. But for boosters, I always say go above this one and even a little above that. So it instead of eight hundred, if they make a thousand, go a thousand. You don't need two thousand amps because you're really not in that profession to keep on charging all the time or as we are. So that should be sufficient. I hope that answered that question. I hope you understand the features that it has. We went over the flashing light. Very, 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 very convenient. Like I said, if you're on the side of the road. It's an emergency. Other vehicles will see that flashing light. It's like having, it's like putting yellow lights, like putting yellow lights in front of you, so other vehicles will know that can save your life. You don't want to be on the side of a dark highway at night, changing a flat without without giving notice to other drivers. Very very important. Like I said, that's that's the as you can see the flashing light. One of the best features, I, I think, like I said, in my opinion. So, so again, cranking amps, there are peak amps. Always get the peak amps from this higher than the highest of your battery. And you should be in good situation if an emergency arises. So if you learned anything from this, if it was informative, please subscribe to my channel. And Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, my other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. And like I said, w the question will probably be from the comments, why did I go through all of this and why did I measure the output at the leads? Well, because that's the only way I can demonstrate to you how it works. And when I have zero volts at the output leads and this is all indicated, that doesn't mean it's ready. It's ready when you connect it to the battery terminal it detects it by a by a sensor now gives out the output at the leads so again the old ones with the batteries like jnc those old ones those are great i always recommend those but those are bulky and heavy this will suffice for your needs as long as it's not a dead dead battery so thank you for watching i hope this was informative if you found it for please give it a like thank you